This is Rostra, the St. Theodore Guerin Junior Classical League podcast, where we bring the lessons of classical study into the light for the benefit of all. Well, welcome back to Season 2, Episode 1 of Rostra. We're so glad to uh, kick off our second season. Uh, last season was so much fun. Uh, lots and lots of people listened. And uh, we've got some really exciting things, I think, on, uh, on deck for Season 2. And we kick off with Isaac Summers, third-year student uh, here at Garen Catholic. And Isaac, I love the topic. Uh, you and I were just talking before... Um, we sat down here, that this is the kind of uh, thing that a person really should know because you might find yourself in conversations and this would come in handy. So what is your topic and why did you pick it? Uh, my topic is Latin expressions used in modern day English. And I picked it because, well, most of my friends say Latin is a dead language. So hearing them say that, I'm like, no, not entirely. I mean, we may not have native speakers, but we do use a lot of Latin phrases, words, and expressions in our modern-day culture. And you answer your friends, to me, exactly the right way. It, what we mean by saying it's a dead language is exactly what you alluded to. Nobody is born learning it as their native language. It's not extinct. But it's not extinct. <laughs> Absolutely right. It's used in so many ways. And uh, so you say expressions and so forth. So you're saying... Person could be walking down the street here, here in the 21st century, and somebody might bust out with a Latin phrase in casual conversation. Oh, I wish I haven't heard a Latin <laughs> expression in so long in a normal conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us some of these because I, I know there are there are a lot that do come into uh, casual conversation or into uh, things that you read, uh, whether it's in the newspaper or, or books or articles or whatnot. So, take us away. So, probably, like, the number one thing, the number one Latin expression to get tattooed on your arm. Weenie, weedy, weeky. <laughs> okay, so I've got a special story about that one. Um, weenie, weedy, weeky. What does it mean? Where did it come from? What's that about? I came, I saw, I conquered, and Julius Caesar had spoken this as, as, he, uh, as the Senate reached out to him, explaining what he did in Gaul, was it? A after Gaul, right. Yeah, after after, after Gaul. Gaul, and they reached out and said, hey, kind of what's going on? And he sends back that three-word response. So um, I, I literally, and, and, and we'll be talking about this soon, um, our football team uh, recently had a game, and a couple of the football players who are also in third-year Latin sent me a video. And at the end of the game, they looked at the camera and said, Wainy weedy weeky <laughs> Papa Perk. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what a great quote uh, to use at the end of a football game. So yeah, I came, I saw, I conquered. It's great for sports. It's great for any kind of a, uh, a cool way of expressing achievement. All right, keep going. I know you've got a bunch. Um, probably one of the most famous Latin in a, or expressions in our U.S. culture is on the quarter or possibly uh, the U.S. dollar, but e pluribus unum. Absolutely. Which translates to out of many, one. Which, of course, if you think about it, our nation, right, we're, we're one country out of 50 states. We're one um, nation of people out of many different people groups, uh, which is great for us as a country. But, man, I, you can see that in so many other circumstances as well. Your school, right, is one school out of many different grade levels. And it, it just goes on. It's a great, great statement about unity. Yeah. Um, another one is carpe diem, uh, which... Lit, which translates literally to pluck the day but if we were to put that into modern english usually people say seize the day seize the day and it is a great expression to try to make the most of time right uh you, you don't know uh how much time that you've got so you make the most of it and and some years ago there was an expression going around yolo you only live once and and it seemed like that was being used to like hey go out and do really risky crazy things and People were connecting that with carpe diem. It's like, well, it, carpe diem isn't so much about, hey, just do something that is ridiculous and risky. But sure, take that class that you thought, eh, I wasn't really sure if I could handle it, right? Uh, maybe uh, uh, go out for that play or, uh, or that team. And of course, uh, there's the bell behind us as uh, uh, we're recording uh, here at school. 
Um, yeah, uh, for, with YOLO, I like to say YODO. You only die once. So you don't live once, you live every day. Ooh, I, ooh, so now, I like that. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, and some of the s smaller ones I have is like ad lib. So usually people ad lib things when they haven't practiced something, they just come up with it on their own. <laughs> Literally, it translates to one's pleasure. But. Yes, ad libitum, right, at one's pleasure. So, uh, quite frankly, uh, now, uh, you, you've got some notes. You've done research here. I'm ad libbing what I'm saying in this, this interview because yeah, uh, I don't have notes in front of me. So, I'm just saying whatever uh, is, is my pleasure, right, whatever comes to, uh, to mind at the time. Ad lib. We abbreviate it, and that's a good one. Well, you're saying there's not a teleprompter? <laughs> Um, another one is Elias and Alibi. These are both etymo etymo etymologically related. So Elias means... Uh, you know what? We're going we're to call it uh, alias. Alias. There alias. There we go. Uh, is it still alibi for... Is, so, is, so we say in English alibi. Is yes. It? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, alias is at another time and other circumstances. And then alibi is elsewhere. So, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, uh, alias is... You're in a different place elsewhere, and then alibi is I was elsewhere. Right, and so we use those words, and, and people don't even realize those are Latin because those come up all the time. Yeah. Think about your movies, your um, you know your police dramas on TV, and things like that. And very often, a criminal will have an alias, right? So basically, pretending to be someone else, another person from another circumstance, or do you have an alibi for where you were on the night of the 17th? Well, yeah. you know, yeah, I wasn't at the scene of the murder. I was at another place. So those have passed straight into common English. This is a somewhat similar, but alter ego translates literally to another I. Absolutely. So you think about uh, Bruce Wayne's alter ego was... Batman. Yeah. Tony Stark's alter ego was? Iron Man. Iron Man, right? So the, literally it's another I, I yeah. in another uh, context. Yeah. Um, I don't really hear this one a lot, but I um, I have heard it at least maybe once or twice. But al dente fortuna, you what? Fortune favors the bold. Yes. Yes. What a great line. And again, it's kind of similar to the carpe diem idea, yeah. right? So... Uh, you don't know. Maybe, maybe you won't get the, the leading role in the play, or, or maybe, maybe you won't make varsity uh, team. But you know what? Fortune favors the bold. Go out and try it and see what happens. And uh, Yeah, very, very good. Um, believe it or not, but uh, RIP originated from the Latin expression requiescat in pace. Yes, let the person rest in peace. Uh, and what's kind of neat about that one is rest in peace. Peace also has the yeah. abbreviation R.I.P., but you're exactly right. It originates from the Latin. Um, another one is uh, vice versa, which means with the position having been changed. So yes. an example since it's I came up with was I support him, but he supports me. That's right. So, vice versa. And, and literally, it, it was the Latin pronunciation, classical, we'd say wike versa. Uh, now, I would encourage you not to use that pronunciation because people will look at you very strangely. So in English, we've taken it and, and pronounced it vice versa. So right, I support you. Vice versa, you support me. Yeah. Um, ergo, which is possibly one of like the more popular, um, I guess, conjunctions. I don't... Yes. Yeah, conjunctions is it translates to therefore or thus. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we've got a big test coming up. Therefore, we need to study. And some people will say, we've got a big test coming up. Ergo, we need to study. Yeah. And so, and you know, sometimes when you throw it into a, a, another language like that, uh, and again, we have French expressions that come into English and uh, German expressions and so many others. Uh, it just elevates the conversation a little bit, right? So uh, it's nice to drop those in. Yeah, um, I think we learned this uh, second year of Latin. Uh, I do not know which tribe, but AM and PM. Yeah. So it's uh, AM is ante meridian and PM is post meridian, and they translate to before and after midday. Before and after midday. That's exactly right. Very, very nice. So I'm, I'm sure you've got a bunch more. Um, give us, oh, maybe give us, give us your top three. The top three that you have left. Uh, top three. <laughs> um, let's see. I got, 
I wouldn't say top three, but I do have like probably like two or three left. It's uh, one of them is in vitro. Okay. Which translates to in a glass. In a glass. Yeah. Um, but usually people think of IVF. Yes. For uh, in vitro, but honestly, scientists do a lot of experiments in vitro in glasses, like test tubes, petri dishes. Absolutely right. Exactly right. Um, Which and let me just say that you find so much of the, these Latin expressions and Latin words in science. Um, in medicine and so forth. So again, another good reason to study Latin. Actually, yeah, I think I do have three, or now it's two left, but um, our probably the most famous one, Auto Domini, AD. Yes. Which translates to, like most people will know it, Garen Catholic, in the year of our Lord. There you go, Auto Domini, in the year of our Lord, very good. Uh, and then the last one I have is per capita, which translates to per heads. And in modern day English, we use it as per unit of population. Per unit of population, right. And simply focusing on the head. Obviously, each person's got a head, so hey, we're counting heads, we're counting, counting people as well. Uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, uh, Isaac. And uh, hopefully, you know, that'll give people some, a little bit of background for some of the conversations they have and maybe help them out uh, in some of the things they read. Thank you for listening to Rostra. You may check out all our episodes on Spotify and follow us on social media at Garen JCL. That's at G-U-E-R-I-N-J-C-L.